Artificial intelligence is a range of software applications that replicate some aspect of human or animal intelligence and their problem solving. Increasingly, we have tools such as robotic pets and humanoid robots that look like and can do many of the things that we can do. Play chess, see, recognize objects and people, recognize what we say and talk back intelligently, and move about without having to be explicitly programmed to avoid specific obstacles. In games, this could be the decisions that a computer makes in trying to beat the player, playing chess or go, or the pathway of moving objects to avoid collisions or to collide with the player in a game. Much of this programming can involve if-then selections, branches to make decisions based upon the information the computer program has available, for example, the player's location or their score. But we have a range of algorithmic solutions to such problems that are much more powerful than if-then selections. Now chatbots are probably the most familiar aspect of artificial intelligence that students will be aware of. Software applications that simulate a conversation on a website, telephone call or social media. These are very easy to program and students at all levels can create simple chatbots by adding questions and then the chatbot responses. Chatbots, however, can be much more complex in the algorithms they use, and one of which is expert systems and neural networks, to be able to respond to questions that have not been explicitly programmed. Now, expert systems are one of the easiest AI technologies for students to program. Similar to chatbox, the user asks a series of if-then questions, but instead of a conversation, an expert system is designed to provide answers, answers to complex problems, one that often experts know about, but are difficult to detail in textbooks and courses. So an expert system on classroom management might capture the expertise of a teacher and through a series of questions narrow down to a specific solution from a very wide range of classroom management problems. Now, expert systems are made up of a software tool called an inference engine, which answers the questions and provides responses, and a knowledge base of rules to apply in response to these questions. Different expert systems have been developed for many problems, from medical diagnosis, car repair, to teaching, and are surprisingly easy to teach students about and to provide them with a powerful tool to solve certain types of problems. Queensland's own Magoo has developed a great expert system and a creation tool with money, flags and sailing ship identification examples but it's the ability for students to create their own expert systems as solutions to real-world problems that is most impressive. Now, beyond expert systems, we have neural networks. Now, these also rely upon real-world problems, but they use a very different process, more akin to how our brain physically processes information and solves problems. Each problem has some inputs that we often do not know beforehand, and some outputs that we can use to train our network, letting it know when it's been successful or not. Between these are layers of interconnecting virtual neurons. So let us take an image recognition problem. We have a collection of many thousands of x-rays, some of which show cancer and some that do not. But it is difficult to come up with a specific algorithm to identify cancers every time. There is just too much information in each image. Using a neural network, we can feed this data into the network, train it by indicating when it correctly identifies a cancer, and in a relatively short period of time, we have a system that we can show an X-ray to, and it will indicate if a cancer is present or not. The secret is in the, in the layers between the inputs and outputs. These have various weightings that change in response to correct answers, slowly building up a pattern that, if we've shown any image, can make a diagnosis. Now, while students may not program their own neural networks in F to 10, they do need to be aware that these are how much of the power of computers comes from. When we look at image, voice, and handwriting recognition, robots walking and balancing, stock market analysis, and many other complex processes that we have sufficient data to train, that which we often have no idea of the exact decisions the computer needs to make in order to solve a problem.